DVD menus, they used to be cool. What happened? I know I'm not the only one to ask this, given how if you look up DVD menus, you'll get various articles and videos with the exact same title that I was originally going to use for this video, where they all just talk about cool DVD menus. And to be honest, that was going to be this video as well, but that seems to be a dried out topic now, with mostly the same menus being brought up over and over again. So instead, I want to tackle something different. I want to look into what happened to the DVD menu and give my theory on how we went from greatness to laziness, and is there any hope for the future? Hello Internet, welcome to Film The- Let's start with some history. In 1975, Sony released the first ever home video format, Betamax, allowing audiences to be able to watch their favorite movies in the comfort of their own home by the means of tape cassettes. The following year, however, Victor Company of Japan, aka JVC, released the VHS, which quickly became the rival to the Betamax, causing a short-lived format war because VHS easily topped over Betamax and reigned supreme as the best version of home media, but at the cost of not-so-great quality, can be easily damaged, and you have to rewind the movie to the very beginning every time you were finished. Because technology wasn't advanced enough, and this was basically a movie protector in a small box, it can't rewind itself. Three years later, in 1978, Philips and MCA released the MCA Disco Vision, a brand new format using optical video recording and reflective discs. In 1980, Pioneer Electronics bought Majority Stake and renamed the format LaserDisc, with it releasing in Japan the following year. Unfortunately, the LaserDisc was pretty much only popular over there with the US and Europe, not really caring about the movie equivalent of a vinyl record, mostly because the players were really expensive at the time and there was no way of recording like you could with a VHS tape. Nonetheless, it was an improvement in audio and video quality, but it still shared the same technology format as VHS, being analog. The LaserDisc was more digital than VHS, but not fully, still having to use analog signals, which is the reason why there are no menus for these things. I mean, think about it, how could you possibly make a menu for a thing that's basically made out of tape? Like, what is there to control? What is there to pick from? The only thing you have is the tape that holds the movie and that's it. Laserdiscs had an improvement in chapter markers, which worked similarly to skipping tracks on CDs, but they were still mostly analog, therefore not capable of the menu. But what was capable was Philips and Sony's new invention in 1995, the DVD, which was fully digital, making the measuring system of what could be put onto said disc from minutes to full-on file sizes. That may not sound important, but to me it does, because instead of only being able to put either 30 or 60 minutes on either side, depending on what type of disc you're using, the minutes don't matter as long as it's smaller than 4 or 9 gigabytes, which can be a lot of minutes. Compress the fuck out of logistics? You can put that shit on a DVD. And because of this newfound file size, menus are now capable of being made. There's no worry of taking up time, and the technology is advanced enough that you're able to control what's happening on the disc just by pressing buttons on your TV remote, something that's impossible to do with analog technology. Now, the reason as to why DVD menus were even made, I'm not entirely sure of. I've tried looking for said reason, but all I'm really able to find is aforementioned articles of nostalgia or tutorials on how to make them. I can only assume that with all this newfound room to put stuff on, special features were the natural way to go. And when you're including many things from behind the scenes footage to documentaries to director and cast commentaries, you're gonna want to make menus. The first kinds of DVD menus were pretty simple, but eventually we started to see the outcomes of creative people's takes. House of a Thousand Corpses is the most iconic one, and for good reason. You have all the main characters standing off to the side during each individual menu, explaining what the menu's for, and then hurling insults at you. <laughs> if you stick in the main menu, then Captain Spaulding gets progressively more upset with you until he eventually leaves. Going through the scene selection, Otis will talk about the different scenes that are shown and talking about his own thoughts and memories of them. It is everything that I love about a DVD menu, something that brings you into the world of the movie you're about to watch. I've never seen House of a Thousand Corpses, but just by going through the menu, I can understand a fair bit of who these characters are and what this world that Rob Zombie built is like. And that's also a major selling point through word of mouth. I was only one year old when the movie's DVD released, but I can imagine people seeing the DVD for the first time and then telling their friend about it, which then makes their friend possibly go out and buy one for themselves to be able to see it, or loves it so much that they just want to own it, which makes the studio more money. Or if you even had the money, just buying DVDs to see what the menu might be like. So you would think that making a really immersive and entertaining DVD menu is something you would really want to strive to do, but... Unfortunately, that costs time and money, which leads me into my first of three reasons why creative menus are now dead. Capitalism. Monty, Monty, Monty. 
must be fun team in a rich man's gun. You see, everything costs money in this hell world we live in, and that includes making menus. Somebody's gonna have to be commissioned to create the art or the animation or the videos. Somebody else would have to be commissioned to edit it all together if it needs to be edited. And then of course there's the coding process, which is inevitable. There's no real way to work around that. So when the studios want to save money, it becomes much cheaper to cut out the editing process for videos and animation and just resort to using a JFEG or at the very best a GIF. I look forward to the comments. So yeah, using bland photos is a much cheaper way of making it, but since everybody loves creative menus, wouldn't it make sense to continue putting in the money and effort to create some quality that people would love? That would be nice if we lived in a world of nice things, but sadly, we live in a society. Get what you fucking deserve! Yeah, we live in a world where people can't be happy, and I'm sure that if you've been on Twitter for a mere 0.1 second, you would know this. And unfortunately, the art and beauty of a creative DVD menu that puts a bit of care into entertaining the person who spent their hard-earned money isn't acknowledged by people who are impatient. And I'm able to find posts from four years ago to even a year ago of people who will gladly say that they don't like a DVD menu because the animations are pointless and take too long. Oh, I'm sorry that a five second transition is taking too long for your scene selections. So with the rise of complaints about creative DVD menus wasting people's times, that only gives more reason for studios to not put in the effort. Not only do they not have to spend money to hire someone to make a transition, but the people will be happy to not have said transition and would be more likely to buy a DVD and give them more money. But don't think I can't hear your thoughts. There has to be some studio, or at the very least an independent filmmaker, that actually cares. There has to be a chance for the creative DVD menu to stay alive. And to that I say, wake up, it's June 20th, 2006, Blu-ray is now out, and fuck! Japan is at it once again, innovating the home media releases with their new invention, the Blu-ray, which brings you higher quality than a DVD possibly could, and in return, the menus become the most laziest. Now yes, there are some Blu-rays out there like Avengers or The Amazing Spider-Man where the animations are still there or the scene selection has this kind of cool feature where it shows the timeline as you scroll through the chapters. Honestly, I like this a lot. I wish it was used more. But for the most part, the menus have resulted to a PNG with the bar at the bottom. And you're probably wondering, how could better video quality kill creative DVD menus? Well, in 2001, the PlayStation 3 was being created. I assure you this has a purpose. And in the process, Sony decided that in order to be the best console on the market, they would create a whole new system custom to the PS3, which basically caused any game developer to have an aneurysm trying to port their game to said console because the coding was unlike anything else, brand new, unknown, and very complicated. Hence why the PS3 sort of failed, because at least trying to port a game to the Xbox 360 isn't as much of a headache, and it only started to find its growth when Sony was able to bring on game devs to create brand new games solely for their console, meaning that they get to build everything from the ground up using the coding and technology and not having to try to painfully port something pre-existent. Now does anybody in the class know who created Blu-ray? I'll give you a hint, it's the company responsible for Morbius. <laughs> That's so old. I don't- what else? Responsible for Venom in Spider-Man 3? I don't fucking know. <laughs> oh, and also the Blu-ray came out the same year as the PS3. The PS3 was also a Blu-ray player. Blu-ray started to be worked on three years before the PS3, and the name was trademarked the same year the PS3 started being worked on. Now, this may all seem irrelevant until I tell you that allegedly, and I say allegedly because my only source is a forum post and I can't really find anything that either agrees or disagrees with it, the coding process for a Blu-ray menu is far more complicated than a DVD menu, has a lot more room for failure, and also has to be compatible for many different players. So basically, that's point number three, Sony. I'm gonna put some dirt in your eye. I don't know what was going on in the 2000s, but Sony, I guess, really liked making complicated coding processes, and that's the final nail I've been able to find for the DVD menu's coffin, because it only makes sense that Blu-ray menus would be the dawn of the creative downfall when it's just easier to slap a PNG in a bar at the bottom and call it a day, instead of making god knows how many attempts trying to make a creative menu. I don't even want to begin to imagine the hell it would possibly be to create the House of a Thousand Corpses menu on Blu-ray from the ground up. And to answer the question of, is there any hope in the future, I would like to be hopeful, given something like the No Way Home 4K menu having a custom animated background instead of a GIF or clips from the movie, but in the end, it's just that. With the way Blu-ray and 4K menus seem to work is that there just are no menus, at least not individually. 
and I think that's just the result of technological advancement. DVDs were more advanced than a Laserdisc, allowing these wonderful menus in the first place, but not advanced enough that they ended up needing these individual menus and the transitions. While Blu-ray is advanced enough that we can have all these menus just show up on the same screen with no need for a transition in order to seamlessly move into a different file, your scene selection just pops up on the side. Yeah, we can maybe go back to being creative to the best it can, but unfortunately it seems that the full video format, transitions, different backgrounds, everything that made these DVD menus so amazing is just not required anymore, and therefore no use in keeping them around. But maybe I'll be proven wrong and the next generation of movie and player formats will bring back the creative menus. Only one can dream. And of course, everyone has their own opinion. But my opinion is the best opinion. I'm sure you figured that out already. Subscribe and please.